In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use a really neat UV mapping function called Follow Active Quads. I'm also going to talk about the use of anisotropy specifically regarding this feature because in a previous tutorial on anisotropy, I talked about the fact that there were two mechanisms for generating anisotropic strand direction. And one of them is a procedural radial function that projects onto the surface and the other is the use of a UV map to determine strand direction, which lets you control anisotropy on more nuanced surfaces. So before we go too much further, let me demonstrate exactly how this feature works. What it does is it produces regularity in a UV map that doesn't unwrap with perfect regularity. I have an object right here that I've generated that has some degree of regularity but it's still kind of an irregular topology. Let's just take this and UV map it really quickly. So we're going to come up to the UV menu and simply invoke unwrap. And there we go. So it's got parts that are quite regular. The polygons down here were perfectly square, so the UV polygons were easily unwrapped to match that perfect square state. Now, if we come over here and assign a texture to this, I've got a texture called checkers and it unwraps in such a way that you can see the flow of the texture is really nice across that surface but it may be that the kind of uv map that we're generating is necessary to create the textures that really follow the flow of the geometry a little bit better so i'm going to select all of those polygons in the UV editor, I'm going to select one of the polygons that has that perfect regularity. I really want this to be perfectly square. As soon as I've done that, I bring up the context menu and invoke follow active quads. Look what it does to that UV island. It makes it perfectly regular. Now, I'm going to select all of these by pressing the A key and then come up to the UV menu in the UV side of the editor here and I'm going to invoke Pack Islands, and that will square it up with the UV space. And you can see what it's done is it's made it so the square texture follows along with the geometry. It does introduce some distortion over here, but it may be that your texture requirements really necessitate that the texture flow along with the geometry. And this is gonna play out when we look at the camera example, because in this particular case, this would allow for the anisotropic strand directions to map more precisely to this geometry over here because of this regular ordering, given that anisotropic strand directions by default follow along the V direction of the UV map. If we take a look at this rendering, you can see the type that's going around this surface. We can also see the grain that's going around the surface and it would be difficult to simply just project this onto the surface because of the 90 degree angle here and the angle right there. So we're gonna use this really cool UV function in order to generate this. So we're gonna come over to the object that we're going to work on, which is this right here. And I'm gonna press the slash key, which is the question mark key, to bring it into its own editing space. And then I need to come down to the object data properties tab right here and I'm going to now press the tab key to go into edit mode because this is where we need to be. If your object doesn't have a UV map, you can just press the plus key. And we're going to generate some basic UV map data for this. In fact, I will come into the front view here and I'm going to select all. And you're going to note that the back is open. So this makes it very easy for the UV mapper to unwrap this. So what we want to do now is to produce the first basic unwrap. So I'm going to come up to the UV menu right here and we're just going to invoke unwrap. But that's not what we want. We want something where the UVs are ordered perfectly vertically from north to south along the V direction specifically. What we need to do is we need to come down here and give it a place where it can cut these UVs apart and unwrap in an even better way, if you want to think about it that way. I'm going to come down here and save these UVs by generating a second UV map, because we may, we may use those. Those are good UVs. So I'm going to press the plus key. That will duplicate these UVs, and I'm going to double click that, and I will call that UVs for type. And then over here, back in the edge menu, I'm going to zoom down to the bottom, way down here, in fact, I'm going to turn off the visual display of subdivision to make this a little bit more easy. 
I'm going to double click this edge right here so I get a loop going around the bottom. Bring up the context menu and then we're going to invoke mark seam and that will tell it when it unwraps that it could open up that edge. Let's come back into face mode, A key, and then we're just going to come back over and we're going to unwrap it again. Ta-da! And there it goes. So that's actually going to be a little bit easier to work with now that it's opened up on those two ends. Now, it's not quite vertical, but it's better. And what we need to do is we need to get these ordered perfectly so they are exactly aligned. But I'm going to show you what that feature does right now just with this data set. If I were to select a single polygon, bring up the context menu, and then invoke follow active quads, this is what it will produce for us. So it's ordered it. It's kind of vertical, but it's got this skew to it. So we need to figure out how to fix that. So I'm going to undo this. We're going to come down here and I'm going to come to this one right here. And what we need to do is make each of the edges perfectly flat. So it's an exact square. So I'm going to come over into edge mode and I'm going to select this edge right here. And I'm going to use the scale tool to scale that to flatten it down. So I'm just pressing zero there and I'm going to do that for each of the four edges. Even if it looks flat, just go ahead and flatten it out to make sure. Because if there's a minor error, it'll propagate. It's going to use this square polygon as the cue for the other polygons. Okay, so each of those is flattened out. Back in face mode here, I'm going to reselect this polygon to make it the active polygon. Let's zoom out bring up the context menu, invoke follow active quads, ta-da, and there we go. It's a great feature for doing this type of thing. Now, I want to align this so and fit it to the UV space. So I'm going to press the A key, and then we're going to come up to the UV menu, and then we're going to come down to where it says Pack Islands, and it'll fit that perfectly. Okay? Now, the next thing I want to do is kind of, again, determine where the center of this is by coming up to the top here because it's these top polygons here that are going to be the center. So these are the ones that I'm going to want to focus on in terms of putting type. So let's press the A key to reselect everything. What we want to do is we want to save this as a template that we can use in Photoshop. Now what we do is we come up to the UV menu right here and we come down to export UV layout. And then what we do is we come over here and you can specify the size to be larger. I'm going to specify it to 4096 by 4096. And then you just give it a name. Now, I already happen to have a name here, so I'm going to name it UV Layout Template. So let's come over to Photoshop and open that up. I already have it. I've opened it once. <laughs> I'm going to bring it up here real quick. And now this is what we can use to develop our type. Now. I'm going to come down to the middle because we have all these squares and I want to find the exact center. So I'm going to bring a guide down and it'll snap to the center and then that will tell me which of these I want to use on either side. So it was four of these here. So I would just come over and create some type. So we'll come over and I'm just going to call this advanced camera, some name like that. Then we would come over, rotate that, move it into position, customize it. Okay, there we go. I'm going to add a layer underneath that's filled just with white. Now we've got a lot of space over here that we're not using and we'll talk about that later. So we'll call this UV Outer Ring Type. Let's come back to Blender. Now that we've gotten that done, I'm going to press that question mark key to take us back into our environment. And we're going to come over to the shading environment. I've customized this a little bit from the default application by putting up a UV space over here and we want to import that type. Now, right now, I already have a 
shading setup for everything. We just want to overlay the type into this area right up here. So what I'm going to do is reselect this. And I've already got a shading setup down here. I'm not going to talk about all of this, but it's just the metal component. But we're going to add that type on top of it by adding another layer to this. And you can see I've got a material here called uh, Back Lens Ring Metal. And I'm going to add a new node. And we're going to add a texture, image texture here. Then we're going to find that PNG file that we just created. So we're going to open. We're going to find that right here. UV layout, outer ring type. Now, in order to sort of see this, I'm going to zoom, I'm going to sort of move down a little bit more closely over here. And I'm also going to turn back on subdivision so that we can see that a little bit more nicely. And I'm going to turn on shading mode here so that we can see this happen in sort of real time. Now, I actually just want to see this directly on the object, and you can do a really cool thing. If you've got an extensive shading system set up and you just want to test a bitmap, you can just take this right here and plug it into the output. Now, you can see that something isn't quite right right there. So what we need to do is we need to tell it which of the two UV maps that we specified or that we set up. Now, I would highly recommend that when you start doing node editing, that you come to Preferences, Add-ons, and then Enable Node Wrangler. And that's going to really help with what we're about to do. I need to come over here, select this, then press Shift-W, and invoke Add Texture Setup, and it will add few things that will help us change some of the parameters of how that texture is set up. So it's telling us down here that we're wanting to use UV map data that's built into the object, but by default it's just picking the first one in the list. So what I want to do is take texture coordinates and just delete it. So I'm going to press the X key and then we're going to come over to add and we're going to search for UV we're just going to use UV map here, bring it down, plug it in to the vector area, and then we need to specify UVs for type. Boom, and there it goes. So that's cool. What we've done right here is just allowed ourselves to preview the placement of that texture. So there are two things that we need to do now. One of them is we need to set the type up as its own specific shader as opposed to just tying the bitmap into the output so we can visualize it. The other thing is we need to configure the anisotropic function of the materials that I have set up. So if I were to come over here, let's take a look at this really quickly. I'm going to bring up a bitmap that I've already configured. I want to do vertical. There we go. For the metal. Okay, so now that we come over here, and if I select this, press the tab key, I can pull back and see that this new UV map that we set up just allows us to map this vertical grain map around this object. And at the same time, we can use this UV map to drive the anisotropic strand direction. And we need to do that by coming down to the tangent function. Remember, if you didn't watch my other video, the tangent direction tells the anisotropic function right here, essentially how you want to bias the reflections. And the reflections bias at a 90 degree angle to the strand direction. By default, the tangent is going to use a projected radial map onto the surface. For instance, in this flat button right here, the radial works well because it just projects those strands down onto it. But now we need to come over here and we need to change this to a UV map and then we need to specify the UVs for type to use as strand direction. Okay, so that's done. Then up here, so this is one, all of these right here are for the metal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of move these down out of the way because it will be easier to visualize this if we really sort of separate the components. 
you're always going to remember that we have a material output. That's the end point of everything. And the material setup for the metals are two mixed BSDF layers, and they come into a mix shader. Mix shaders are really, really useful, and we're going to use another one to layer the type on top. So you can mix things together, but you can also to layer one material onto another using a mask. So I'm going to copy this, Control-C or Command-C if you're on the Mac, like I am. Paste, Command or Control-V, and then we just move that off, okay? So, we're going to take the output of these two into the bottom of another mix shader. And then this is going to go into the output. It's automatically going to unlink that bitmap. So what we need to do now is set a BSDF for these to modify. So I'm going to come over here to Shader. And we're going to come to Principled BSDF. And this is going to be the black type. This is going to be the coloration for the type. So it needs to be black. And then it's got, I'm going to use the default specular, and I'm going to take the roughness down just a little bit. I want to visualize what that looks like. In fact, I'm going to come up here, press the tab key to leave edit mode. And I'm going to plug this material into the output temporarily, just so that we can visualize what that looks like. And it's just a basic black type of, sort of a plastic glossy shader. Okay, now... Instead now, because I'm wanting to mix it, I'm going to take it into the top slot of our second top slot of our second shader there, and I need to unplug this. There we go. And then this second mix shader is what gets plugged in finally to the output. Okay, now what we need to do is it's still just mixing this and the metal components down here in sort of a layer weighted way. And this 0.7 means it's going to weight more of it to the bottom shader than the top. If it were 0 0.2, say two, more of the weighting would be biased towards the top shader. But we don't want a weighting. We want something to mask the top to the bottom, and that's what this bitmap is right here. This is the bitmap that contains the type. So instead, <laughs> you're always doing this with nodes, you're always moving things around. I'm going to take the color and I'm going to drop it right in here to the factor, and that is going to make that be a mask, and we get that instead. And then we could do a ray trace on it, full ray trace, to see that. 